Howdy, I'm Bob Terry, and welcome to another episode of the classic western Cowboy G-Men, and it stars Russell Hayden and Jackie Coogan. It's all brought to you here free online by westernsontheweb.com. Uh, get ready for some action, because here they come. The Cowboy G-Men, hard-riding, fast-shooting, government secret service men of the Old West. Working undercover on dangerous special assignments. Courageous, resourceful fighters for law and order. The Cowboy G-Men in General Delivery. Starring Russell Hayden as Pat Gallagher and Jackie Coogan as Tony Crockett. In April of 1877, a clever swindler evolved a scheme to defraud the postal system itself. Before insurance inspector John Merritt came on the case, Lost payments on registered mail total $14,300. Mr. Merritt? That's right. I said I'd meet you on my route. I got a letter here for you. Letter for me? Yeah, I'll have to have some identification. This is registered mail. Satisfied? Yeah. You're John Merritt, all right. Here, uh... The sign right there. Wait a minute. I can't sign this. That isn't a regulation receipt for registered mail. It isn't? Suppose I see your credentials. Sure. While en route to little Idaho mining town of Lost Gap, Inspector Merritt vanished, disappeared without a trace. The post office department requested the help of governors. Inspector Merritt's strange disappearance brought my partner, Stoney Crockett, and myself on the case. Our job, find out what happened to Merritt and why he disappeared. investigation at the Lost Gap post office. Inspector Merritt had been headed for Lost Gap when he disappeared. The postmaster, Abner Timberlake, seemed cooperative enough, maybe a little too anxious to help. We told him why we were here and asked him what he knew about Merritt. Mr. Timberlake? That's right. My name's Gallagher, sir, and this is my partner, Mr. Crockett. How do you do? We're federal agents. Mm -hmm. It looks all right to me. We're here investigating the disappearance of Mr. Merritt. Mm -hmm. Well, I know the name of Merritt, that's all right, but that's about all. However, I knew that sooner or later they'd send a man out in the district office after my report. What report? Well, I told them all about the registered packages. Packages? How many? Oh, dozens of them, all shapes and sizes. Come in and I'll show you. Thank you. Well, there you are. You ever seen anything like that in a town this size? What's so strange about a post office getting packages? Maybe everybody did their Christmas shopping early. <laughs> Take another look at the postmark. Postmark? Maple Leaf. Where's that? That's ah, a little Canadian town just north of the border. This is too. They all are. From Maple Leaf? Every last one of them. And another strange thing. I know everybody in Lost Gap, and I've never heard of any of those names before. Hmm. And they're all general delivery, too. You mean no one's ever picked up any of these packages? Not a one. And if any more come in, I'll have to move out. Hey, what are you doing there? I'm opening it. Why? Oh, you can't do that. That's foreign mail from Canada. You can't open it without a written authority from the district postmaster regulations. How long will it take to get permission? Oh, maybe a week. Give it take a day or two. That's fine. A man disappears and you quote regulations. All right, we'll be back in a week, Mr. Timberlake. Well, that's a sensible thing to do. I'd like to help you, but if I got caught breaking regulations... I understand. Say, Mr. Timberlake, you mentioned that you knew Merritt by name. How? Well, uh, I, I got it from the letter it came from. I'll bet it came from Canada. <laughs> that partner of yours is sure a kidder. No, I'll get it for you. Thanks. Came from Whitewater, Montana. Whitewater. Perfume, huh? This is domestic mail. Mr. Timberlake, I'll take the responsibility for opening it. The regulation. 
The letter was in a woman's handwriting, and it was addressed to Johnny Darling. Most of the letter was just small talk. Then came one line that seemed important. Hey, Stoney, get this. I shouldn't have told you how it works, John. Promise me you'll never mention to anyone who told you. Well, I'm Lenore. I wonder what she said. Uh, who is it signed by? Lenore Dalson. You know her? No. Well, I'll just keep this letter if it's all right with you, Mr. Timberlake. Well, it's all right, but I gotta have a receipt for it. Regulations. Sign for it, will you, Tony? Yeah. There you are, Mr. Regulations, and we'll uh, see you in about a week. Goodbye, Goodbye. sir. Goodbye. 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 left Los Gap and headed north across the border to Maple Leaf, Canada. We didn't have much to go on. Post office full of packages, a letter from a girl, and a postmaster who liked to hide behind regulations. We had already wired our headquarters that we were crossing the border and asked them to notify the Canadian officials to cooperate. I had a feeling those undelivered packages had something to do with Inspector Merritt's disappearance. We got to Maple Leaf and rode up to the Royal Canadian Post Office. I tell you, Mr. McGill, something better be done. How can a man conduct a mail order business when his mail is always lost? We've done everything we can, Mr. Hudson. We've notified the American authorities. Your mail never reaches the Canadian border. Pardon me. Oh, oh sure, sure. Yes, sir. You the postmaster? That's right, Rodney McGill. My name's Pat Gallagher. I'm Stoney Crockett. We're United States government agents. We're up here to check on John Merritt. Yes, I heard he was missing. You see, Mr. Hudson, the Americans are trying to help you. What do you mean? Uh, Mr. Hudson runs a mail order jewelry and watch repair business. Seems like the post office has gone out of its way to lose every package that's sent to me from the States. What size packages? Oh, small ones, uh, about that size. Oh, wait a minute, you're sure they're that size? Well, sure, but there's no excuse for that. Every package is registered. Values from $50 up to $800. You should have the problem the postmaster at Lost Gap's got. He's got a room full of uncalled for packages. <laughs> you uh, were in Lost Gap looking for uh, merit? Yeah. So all we could find was a letter from a woman in Whitewater. Hmm. Well, I only hope you men can do something about it, Mr. Gallagher. It's wrecking my business. Well, good day. This is only an experimental service. If this case isn't solved, we may have to refuse to register packages. Well, uh, have you been missing packages all along? United States Post Office all along the border have been paying for lost mail. Tell me, could we look at some of the tracers you've sent out? Yes, they're in my desk. Come on in. Thank you. What's wrong, Tom? I just opened the gates to give them some water and they flew out. Hey, look, Pat. They're pigeons. Homing pigeons. Now, who'd be stupid enough to send them through the mail? <laughs> there you are. <laughs> oh, look out! Up. Oh. Well, there's one delivery that'll never be made. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. They know their way home. This is my wife's young brother, Tom Dougal. I thought I was teaching him the post office business. Yeah, I don't blame him. It isn't every day that you get homing pigeons in a post office. <laughs> Say, may we see those tracers now, please? Why, yes, they're right here. They've been coming in most every day. Oh, How much it? mail do you lose? At first, we thought it was robberies. But the uh, Mounties and the post office officials said that wasn't so. Besides, all special mail comes in sealed boxes. Who opens the boxes? Just myself and Tom here. And all special mail goes in that bin. Oh, yeah. Say, may we take these two with us? Which? This one and this one. Why, yes, I guess so. Thank you. We'll keep in touch with you. If you want us for anything, you can always get us at Lost Gap. Yeah, we'll be back there by the end of the week. Well, I certainly wish you all the luck. In all my years of service, nothing like this has ever happened to me before. Well, don't worry. Thanks for your cooperation. Thank we'll you. do our best. We'll get out of here, Stoney, before it starts snowing. How come you only kept two tracers, Pat? That's all we need, Stoney. Where are they from? Well, this one's from Apple Tree, Washington. Take a look at that one. Whitewater, Montana. Same as the girl's letter, huh? Yeah. Stoney, we'd better get started. Stoney! 
Hey, Stoney, got any more 44s? Get in the saddlebag! Bushwhack for fur and fine, nobody ever was. What'd they get? They got Lenore's letter. The one to Merritt. Well, then that's mighty important. Stoney, look. There was only three people that knew we had that letter. The two postmasters and that man by the name of... Hudson. Hudson, that's yeah. right. The one who lost the packages. That's right. Yeah, I've got an idea. We're gonna split up. Yeah? I'm gonna call in Lenore Delson and Whitewater while... Wait a minute, wait a minute. How come whenever there's a woman involved, you always get the assignment. Maybe that's because I've got more hair. That's real pretty. Uh -huh. Now look, when you get to Apple Tree, Washington, get a package about the same size as the one that Hudson lost. Yeah. Mail it to this name and address. Uh-huh, I get it. And registered? Right. Now I'll meet you in Lost Gap. Right. I wonder what's gonna happen to that package I send. I don't know. But we should find out in the not too distant future. Let's get our guns. <laughs> On the way to Whitewater, I thought over what we knew so far. Some big pieces missing. But I was beginning to get a general idea of the mail fraud. Now, if Lenore Delson would just help us. Finding her was easy enough. Lenore had a little notion store and a gift shop on the main street of Whitewater. Oh, I'm sorry I haven't the kind you want, Mrs. Kulick. But I'm expecting some in, though. Well, thank you, Miss Delson. I'll call again. Bye. Well, can I show you something? No, but you might be able to tell me something. Can I? What? I'd like to talk to you about the letter that you wrote to John Merritt. You're a detective? No, a government agent. My name's Gallagher. I'd like to know why and how John Merritt disappeared. Disappeared? Well, then that's why I never heard from him. Oh, you didn't know? No. Well, I'm sorry that I'm the man that has to tell you. But I've got to ask you about one line in that letter. You said something that you didn't want something repeated. You remember what that was? I can't remember exactly what I said. Did John Merritt talk you into leaving one side and helping him? Maybe if I could see the letter, I... Well, certainly, my dear. Here it is. Take it. Read it. Take all the time you need. Uh, I wouldn't uh, do that, Gallagher. <laughs> well, I guess that answers one of my questions, Hudson. What happened to Merritt? Oh, I think it answers two. What happened to Merritt and what's going to happen to you? Come on, come along. Now you don't try anything. Apple tree apples. Help yourself. Hmm. Mighty hospitable. Well, hi, old pal. I might have known it. I'm in the apple country, and here is the worm. <laughs> Now, what are you doing here, old friend? Shh, don't tell anybody, but this is the post office, and I'm going to mail this package. <laughs> it, it figures. And who are you trying to outsmart? No swindle, sir. Perfectly legitimate. I conduct a mail order business in pigeons. You know, I thought there'd be people that were stupid enough to buy 
birds by mail. <laughs> Aren't you happy to see me? Me, Zerbo, in an honest enterprise at last. Honest enterprise, eh? Those are homing pigeons. Is that so? Mm-hmm. And when the buyers get them and they open the cage, the birds fly home to you. They do? Mm-hmm. Oh, then that's why I never run out of pigeons. Oh, yeah. No. I'd like to send this registered for $150. It goes to J.K. Lewis of Maple Leaf, Canada. J.K. Lewis? Care for an apple? Well, uh, tell me more about your pigeons, you vulture. <laughs> well, ten flew back last week. No, not yet, my dear. Oh, not anymore, please. And yeah, he's passed out anyway. As soon as Jack Gibbons gets here, he'll talk. No, he won't. He's a government man. Oh, not like some girls, eh, who talk to postal inspectors? I didn't. You forget, my dear, I read your letter. But you're in this thing up to your neck the same as we are. However, I uh, might be induced to uh, forgive and forget under certain conditions. How well did you know Merritt? I was in love with him. I want you to help me catch the man that murdered him. What's wrong? Remember the guy with that one there? His partner? Yeah. I just saw him in an apple tree. He was mailing a registered package to J.K. Lewis. J.K. Lewis? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm sure, I'm sure. I was right behind him in the post office. Oh, this could be a trap. Take care of these two. Oh, wait, Ed. Maple Leaf. General delivery mail for Crockett. That's uh, C R O C. That's the man. He sent another registered package to J K Lewis after we paid the insurance on the first one. Oh no. Mr. Hudson. Oh yeah. Did you get any registered packages last night? Yeah, three. Any for J.K. Lewis? One. What'd you do with it? it was the same as always. Rewrapped it and sent it to Lost Gap along with the others. Why? If those government men get a hold of that package, we'll all go to jail. Look, Mr. Hudson, don't you think we ought to get out of this right now before it's too late? Just when it's beginning to pay off? Then I want out. You want what? <laughs> you're the key to this whole setup. You do as you're told from now on. Or you will get what Merritt got. Well, where are you going? Going to Lost Gap. I gotta collect that package before they do.
covered. You, you can trust me when you knew I was working for Hudson? Merritt did, didn't he? And after all, I'll need a good witness. Thanks, Pat. You think you can keep him covered until I send somebody up for him? Sure, it's a cinch. Thanks, wish me luck. Things were moving to a climax now. I had the racket pretty well pegged. But we still needed evidence. I hoped Stoney would be able to do his part. I'd know soon enough. Hello, Mr. Timberlake. Morning, Mr. Gallagher. Hope you've got some good news for me. Yep, good and bad. What do you mean? We ever got permission to open those Canadian packages. Also heard from your partner. He's an apple tree. In jail. In jail? Yep, attempted mail fraud. Well, how do you like that? Oh, come on, and we'll take a look at these packages. Thanks, I will. All right, take your pick. Any of them come this morning's mail? Oh, yes. Yeah, this one did. Hmm. Well, let's take a look at it. Well, I've been doggone. Now we know what happened to all those registered packages. They were sent to Maple Leaf, rewrapped, and sent back here to you. Yep, and somebody collected up to $1,000 on every one of them. But can you prove it? I think I can. This package is the reason my partner's in jail. You see, he registered it in Apple Tree, Washington. Sent it to Maple Leaf, Canada. They rewrapped it, and it winds up here. Pretty good evidence. Uh, pardon me, I'm uh, here to pick up a package for Tom Jones. Looks like one of those small ones uh, had them all over. And the evidence. We'll get the horses. Now, Mr. Hudson, you're going to tell me where you hid Merritt's body. Come on. And this little bit of evidence is going to convict Hudson and his gang of mail fraud and murder. There's one thing I don't understand, Pat. What's that? Well, up in Maple Leaf, how did they know which package to rewrap and send down here? Well, they had a code. Three letters in alphabetical order, like A.B. Collins or Frank G. Hudson. The one you sent was J.K. Lewis. When Dougal saw three initials in a row, he would hide the package and then send it to me. That's right. And Merritt knew about this racket before he talked to you. Hey, Stoney, tell me. How'd you break out of jail? I didn't break out. I was bailed out. Oh. Bailed out? Who bailed you out? Oh, a bald-headed little angel. You don't mean Zerbo. Yeah, and by the way, Pat, will you please give me $50? I gotta send it right back to him or he goes to jail. All right, Stoney. Well, while you're taking this back to Zerbo, I'll take Miss Delson back to Whitewater. If I should have to faint again, will you catch me? What do you think? We better get started to Whitewater. In 
1910, the United States Post Office established a system of parcel post. And in 1913, insured packages. Both services continue to this day. for joining us for this wonderful classic western film. It's brought to you here free by westernsonthewebcom your home for hundreds of western movies, western TV shows, and original western webcast episode, and we do our best to keep it all family friendly. My name's Bob Terry. Have a great-tastic day, and we hope to see you again on Down the Trail. <laughs>